So before I switch over from Caden Live to Olive, I thought it'd be a good idea to actually go over my Caden Live workflow. So if you're new to this channel, remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below because it'll really help the channel out. I'm aiming for a thousand subs and any help would be really appreciated. So now that's out of the way, let's get started. Good afternoon everyone and welcome back to the channel. So this is my install of Caden Live. I'm just running, I think it's like a, what is it called? The, what is the theme called? Someone is gonna guess it before I even find it. It is Breeze High Contrast and with the fusion theme or fusion style, whatever. That's not too important. So yeah, basically this is how I have Caden Live laid out. This is pretty much the default layout. The only thing that I've changed is probably the width of this and the width of a couple of these things, but I don't do anything too special with Caden Live. It's all pretty basic what I do with it. So yeah, it's not going to be too long of a video, so we'll just get right into it. So for my favorites, I've got a couple of things favorited. So we've got Fade from Black that I actually use on a daily basis. Lift, Gamma, and Game I don't use. That's just one of the defaults. I just haven't removed it. Saturation. So I don't know if you would have noticed this, but every single one of my videos, I slightly boost the saturation a little bit because it kind of adds a bit more color into the scene. I think it looks better. No one's complained about it. And yeah, basically I think it just, it makes the scene pop a little bit, basically. I'm not a big video editor guy, but from my uninformed perspective, I think it looks a bit better. I've always kind of liked more saturated content anyway. So even though it's not as color accurate, I think it looks better. So transform I use to basically just move some things out of the way of my screen. I'll show you that in a couple of minutes. And volume I use not much. This is something I used a while ago, back when I was just recording with my phone. So back then my phone's mic wasn't really great. Now that I'm using this Blue Yeti right here, my volume is a lot better and I can obviously just control it from this. So if I need to raise my volume, then I can easily do that from here. But back on my phone, I didn't have that option. So I would have to boost the volume a little bit, which kind of made the audio in those videos not great, but you know, people still watch them for some reason. I don't know why some of them are terrible, like my channel trailer. I should update that, but yeah, I haven't gotten around to it yet. Anyway, so before I get completely sidetracked, what I will do first up is I will import all the clips that I use. So I'll typically import my outro and my intro straight away so I don't end up forgetting them. I think that's the new version of the intro. And I will then also import the generic assets that I'm using. So this is just in my assets folder. I don't know if you guys can see it properly. If I could zoom in on it, I would, but hopefully it's still pretty easy to see. So even if I don't end up using them, I'll import all of this stuff. So my Twitter, my like and comment thing, my library address, my Discord, and also the animation for subscribing and ding the bell that you've seen plenty of times if you've seen any of my videos. So yeah, basically now that we've done that, I also import the clips that I'm using. So those should have been moved into this folder. Oh no, that's actually my new stuff. So the video we're gonna look at is a video that I recorded maybe five minutes before this one. So this video will be up by the time you see this one. So you're not seeing anything new, unless you haven't seen that video, I guess. So this is all of the clips for this video. They'll take you a couple of seconds to import. So I don't use the GPU rendering library for Caden Live. I know that some people have had some positive experience with it, but for me, every time I use it, it has been anywhere from just as slow as Caden Live with just CPU rendering to infinitely slower. So I don't use that. So you may be wondering why I actually import things like my titles and things like that. I'm not gonna show you now because very bad things will happen, but if I click the title button, Caden Live will crash. Not like every so often, it will crash 100% of the time. So instead of doing that, what I've done is I've gone and made these generic ones that I can use in GIMP. I might show you guys that a bit later in the video and basically what I'm just using for that. I could use Inkscape as well, but I upload everything in 1080p, so I might as well just make these at this size and then it'll just work fine. So 
I pretty much never leave this basic mode here. So I've got the things that I use on a regular basis just bound to keys. So pretty much all I use, you've probably seen it before if you've seen any of my videos, I don't do much editing. Most of my editing is just cutting the clips. So we'll take this one in here and I usually zoom in on this just so it's a bit easier to make out a point we want to work with. I think that I've got my audio, my audio is muted on my actual system. So I might just, I don't know, maybe, maybe you guys can hear it through my microphone when I play it. We'll see. I don't know how annoying that's going to be. So I might actually just mute my audio for now. So one of the nice things about using Caden Live is that you have this waveform down here. So you can easily cut stuff and do stuff like that. If you want to cut out like dead points, you can easily see where they are. With OpenShot, at least with the default settings, you don't have this waveform. Maybe there's a way to turn it on. I don't know. But if there is, I'm still not going to switch back to OpenShot because I've just had so many problems using that. Anyway, so what I'll usually do is cut out this bit of silence right at the start. So there's nothing too special that happens in here. Usually it's just me like breathing <laughs> or doing something like forgetting that I've started or something. So we'll cut that bit out. And then on R, I've got that bound to basically remove this empty space here. So we run that and that will just clean that up. And I'll typically, we'll unmute that for now. I'll typically also come right to the end and find where this starts basically. It's not playing for some reason. I guess it's a bit weird with OBS also running. And we cut right there. So right after I do the let's get started thingy, then I'll cut that off, then chuck my new intro in, which I actually need to fix the audio levels on. Right now, it's a bit loud. If I play it through the microphone, I don't expect people to keep watching because it is really, really loud. So for now, what I'll normally do is take volume. I should actually just go re-render that clip, move that onto the correct part, drop that by, I think it was dropped by 16 or so decibels, and that was fine. I'll move it to 11. Let's try it out. Caden Live is even slower than it normally is because I'm actually recording. Yeah, that's fine. Before we go on to the next part, what I will do is I will drop saturation on here. Then I'll usually boost that up to like 140. And one more thing that I do before going on to the next section is taking... Yep, okay, so about here or so. I can't really do it too well because obviously it's going to be a bit laggy. So put that clip in there. Normally I would line it up properly, but as you can see, it's it's lagging horrendously. So we'll just work with it as it is. And then I'll take the transform here and I'll usually move that over by about negative 600 pixels and it moves into this nice space here. If you've noticed that I've forgotten to do that a couple of times, it, it's just because I've forgotten to do that. I'm kind of forgetful in that way. So I'm not gonna go through this whole eight minute clip in here because that would take too long. So we'll just jump right to the end. We'll jump right to the end of this as well. So I'm just scrolling through here with my like up and down on my um, mouse wheel thingy, or it's my trackpad, but yeah, basically mouse wheel thingy. So we'll come right to the end here. So normally what I'll do is I'll line up where I'm saying directly at the start of where I say Twitter is where I will drop this bit of text in here. So let's see if we can do that. So that was about roughly there. I think it gives a pretty cool effect if the instant that I say Twitter is where that pops up. I don't know how other people feel about that, if it really bothers them. I kind of like it to be frame perfect. So after I'm done with this video, then I'm going to go actually edit that properly myself. For now, this is kind of just showing you guys the brief stuff that I do in here. So I think that's pretty much everything for what I'm doing within Caden Live. So I'll also do some stuff within GIMP. I'm not even going to bother saving that. That's not really worth saving for now. So we'll bring GIMP up quickly. And basically what I do with GIMP when I'm video editing is I will bring up, where is it? So it'll be in my asset folder within generic. And then it is within this text.xcf. So this is a very basic file. So it's just this, I know, I know this is not the best way to do text, even if I'm going to do it within GIMP. I know there are better ways to do it before anyone tells me that I'm doing this in a dumb way. I am well aware that I am. But this also makes it really easy for editing it. So what I've got here is a basically a 1920 by 1080 width thing within GIMP. 
So when I drop this into Caden Live, this is instantly going to be in the place that I need it to be in. The proper way to do this would actually be to take this, then crop to content, and then move this around as I need it. So I can have it in like different locations if I need to have it in different locations. But I never put it anywhere besides the basic place that I have it right at the bottom in the center. So because I only have it at that point, then I never need to move it. It's always where I need it. It saves me a couple of seconds and basically I don't have to think about it. So what I'll do with here is, so this font I've got in here is uh, Noto Sans or Noto Sans. I don't know the correct way to say that is. So if I want to make a new bit of text for this, I'll just change this to something else like, um, give me money, my dudes. Yeah. And then for some reason GIMP decided to go back to a different color. That's one of the problems with GIMP. It for some reason will decide to not maintain the color that you're currently working with. It's a little bit of annoyance with this program, but I can deal with it. And then I'll basically go by eye and then cut this side. We'll try to line it up roughly so it's about accurate. I think that's about it. And I'll actually be on the right layer, delete that. Then if we just press, I think I have it bound to S maybe? No, O. O I've got bound to crop to content. Then we'll take this, we will center that, and then we'll zoom in on this just so I don't end up moving it too much. Then I'll center that, then come out here, look at this by eye basically, and try to center that. So yeah, that's that's pretty accurate. So now if I want to take this bit of text and just put it into Caden Live, I'd render this as a PNG and just drop it in and it will work perfectly fine. No need to remove it around within Caden Live. It's exactly where I need it to be. And yeah, make, basically saves me some time. So I don't do much for editing. As you saw, I pretty much just boost the saturation. I will cut out some stuff and that's about it, really. I'll do some text editing within GIMP and then just drop it in. But most of the stuff that I use for like daily videos, like my Twitter handle and my Discord link, all of those I've already made. So I just drop them in. And that animation, I didn't actually make that. I found someone who was basically giving it away for free on YouTube. And you might have seen on other channels because it's just easy. There's no point making your own if you've got one that already works and someone's just willing to give it away. So I think that's pretty much everything for my editing process. I was just going to do this video solely on Caden Live, but I felt like including the GIMP stuff as well because it kind of fits in perfectly with this video. There's no point going over thumbnails. It's kind of a separate thing post video work. I might do a separate video on that. If this one does well, we'll see how that goes. So yeah, if you like this video, then let me know down below what you think about it. Leave me a like, tell me what your thoughts are and maybe I'll do some more of them. If you wanna see more videos like this, remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below because it'll really help the channel out. Down below, I've got my, my Patreon and my PayPal and all of my donate links and all the support stuff down below. So go check those out if you wanna support the channel. Obviously you don't have to because the content will always be available for free on YouTube and also over on library if you wanna watch on a platform that isn't YouTube. And if you want to chat with me, I've got my Discord, which will be down below as well. My Twitter and my Mastodon you can go to for video updates because YouTube can never actually be trusted to push updates to anyone. And up on at that corner, I've got the playlist that this video is in. So go check that out if you want to see other videos like this. So I think that's pretty much everything for me. And I'm out. That was really bad. <laughs>